Uh, so the question here is, what's the name for doctor? Konagu is one of the names that I know, and that's the one I probably use the most. And then there's another one. I'll have to pull it up here. Something like Kada Kada Adani or something. But the first one means uh, to kind of touch people. And then we were talking, I was talking with a friend just about Qada uh, Yasehi. There's another name. So that one, um, this dictionary that I've been working on for a few years now, uh, one of the ideas behind this dictionary comes from James Crippen, which was giving a, a sort of detailed breakdown of how the language works. So, you know, this process, so this would be the word. So we see there's actually three words there. There's a, a, a noun, in this case it's a pronoun, and then there's a relational noun after it, and then there's this verb that has been changed into a noun. And so it's kind of a complicated process, but one of the things I wanted this to have is to segment, and segment means we, we blow it apart, we also write the invisible things, if there are invisible things there, and then after that, is a D and so you sort of see this plus this plus this and then these are separated by hyphens here to show there's the classifier uh, there's the root and then there's a suffix and then if you follow the order it shows you what those things are so this is persons fourth person human possessive around or body classifier and it says what kind of classifier it is it's minus D, zero, plus I. And then the root means to heal or to cure. And then there's a relational suffix on there. Um, and then in parentheses, it shows you where uh, that was found. So this was out of the Carrie Eggleston's Dictionary of Clinkett, which was published under Carrie Edwards. Uh, a lot of stuff comes from Jeff Lear. This could be uh, any number of his publications or notes. And then let me see if there are other mm, doctorch. Uh, ka da yasehi. Kunagu is another one, which I, I guess I don't have in there. So, Kunagu, uh, I can't remember where. Uh, is that how it is? Kunugu. Kunagu. Kunagu. No. Kunagu would be medicates people. Nak could be a verb, and if it's the verb root, then it's to medicate. Ahwakya nikka daya sechi dilation drops ahwak to de tescha achjachana. Oh, nikoyach one. I've had to uh, get sometimes those dilating drops, and I've taught a class shortly after, and it's just crazy. I had the big bright lights and trying to talk to people and trying to like lead the discussion and you everything just looks so crazy so igoya uh, khwan atkatsku yeah so this i think i might have misstated that so here's for the katsku so tokane is a baby yadi is yadi just means child but so if you're talking about like an animal the way that I understand it and the way it's been explained to me, like let's say you had a black bear, tsik, tsik, yedi would be, usually it just means a bear cub, but you could call it tsik katsuku when it leaves its mother but it's still pretty little. So it just katsuku on its own means adolescent. Yedda katsuku is a little boy Shatkiatsku, and there's other ways to say that, uh, is a little girl. Atkatsku is child. Atkatsku is just a child. You're telling a story, and then this child was there. But atyatki or adatki is children. So those are the, you know, shatkiatsku, yatkatsku, um, and then you have 
at katsku at yetki and then shaksani would be uh, little girls and kesani would be boys so these these boys and then these girls uh, shaksani means little little women and kesani means little tree trunks so you call little boys and then uh, Yaduk means a, a young man who's sort of not quite adolescent but not quite full grown. Um, Shatk would be, a, and so Shatk and Yaduk, they're ready to, you know, we go back into the olden times, and you could marry him up. But, you know, now we're probably thinking, probably past the puberty point, they'd start turning it into Shatk and Yaduk. And then when they start becoming sort of, I don't know, I guess adults, they could be yis ka and yis shawat until they're just ka and shawat and then ka shan and shawat shan. You okay? Any other questions? I think today we're just going to have kind of a slower reflection day. We did a couple of these immersion Thursdays, which I think were very fun, but maybe also uh, very trying for some of us, and so I thought we'd have a chance to just sort of talk about the language learning process. How's it going? What do you need? What are some things that you're sort of thinking about that might help uh, you on your journey? So this will be a little bit of a slower pace, but I've also got some things, some ideas we could go through the beginning, clink it, and, and just maybe for the last hour do just some immersion. We could revisit some of those slides that we were looking at about sort of the verb complex and some of these things and maybe explain it a little bit more. Uh, but it's kind of up to you guys. Or maybe let's just go around and everybody uh, who, you could type it if you don't have a microphone. And if you have a microphone, you could just tell us. Uh, and if you have any kind of illness that keeps you from talking comfortably, you can type it. And if you can't talk or type, then we could just do it later. But I just want to know, check in, how's it going? Uh, we've been doing this for about a month and a half now, a month. And just sort of uh, check in with everybody and see what kinds of things are you realizing that you want more of? Because um, I've got my ideas of what we're going to go through. But I also want to make sure that you're not just sort of on the receiving end of what's going on here. Anybody want to go first? Let's see, pick a few high use verbs for Thursdays, conjugate high use tenses, practice short sentences. That's a great idea. Uh, we did this thing a while ago where I asked students what the top verbs were that they used. And so for me, uh, what we look at, I, I highly recommend we look at imperfective, perfective, future. Right? So you could just say, happening now, happened, will happen. And, and then you could say the negative versions of those. Not happening now, didn't happen, won't happen. And just stick with those. As you sort of start to master those, then you could look into these other categories. Because, you know, when we look at a clinket verb, um, like let's just take, uh, let's take a common verb. So we get clinket verbs. And so one, one verb that's, uh, let's see, let's just say to, to write. Well, let's just pick that. Like you get to write something or draw a picture. Uh, that's a pretty good one. Uh, so you can see here, there's there's different ways we can use this. And one of the things that we should be working on is that we can look at this information that Chagi Shawu has put together. And really all we need is the mode and then we can add the, we could change that pronoun, right? So if we see this is Chach Shahit, we know this is the Ka, and then we get Shahit. Right, so that's what it's going to be. We, we see the classifier as going sh, heat is long and low, and now we should be able to change that. So we say 
Katu Shahid, we are writing. Kai uh, Shahid, you are writing. Kai Shahid, y'all are writing. Ak Shahid, she or he is writing. Has Ak Shahid, they are writing. Oh, it, sorry, there's got to be the it on there. And then, um, uh, Kadujahit, uh, no, Kadushit, sorry. And so people are writing, you know, it's being written or whatever. And so those are some things we could do, is we can sort of identify some verbs that we want to learn how to use, and then we'll, u we'll use uh, imperfective, perfective, and future, because those are, I think, the ones you need most commonly. Once you start to get those, then we start looking into uh, command forms, kashahit, where you're telling someone to write it or to draw it or to take a picture, and then to uh, not do it. But those get a little bit more complicated, especially the prohibitive is a little bit more complicated. Um, but kashahit, uh, the way that you get this, there's a couple of different ways that you do. Uh, the most common way is you're actually getting the imperfective. You're adding shish before it, which means don't. And then you're adding ik or ak, which is the suffix for don't. So those, those come combined to mean don't do that thing. You okay? Anybody else? Things that you were hoping to see more of or that you want to see or want to do? How's it going? Uh, reality check, uh, inspirational talks. Not quite sure, sure if this is how to say it. Uh, stu verbs khashtu achtu astagu. Kwashke. Yuck, eh, yeah, so we'll, we'll learn. Uh, more verbs, and so I, I like the idea of getting these high-use verbs. So it'd be good if you guys, and so I'll grab some, but I'm, you know, if I'm just thinking of things, it might end up being things that I like to talk about. So things that you, you would use on a daily basis. So if you think of things, uh, feel free to, to just let me know now or to um, send me an email or, or, you know, we'll bring it up in class and stuff, and we'll try to drill those and also put them into a few different sentences. Cheesh. Anybody else? Be good to hear from everybody. I think for me personally, it's about integrating language use into every day. Like counting and naming things in Clinket, like see a bird, see a tree, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of training myself to do that, to be more comfortable speaking. And then verbs, like the high use verbs, will be really helpful for that. Mm -hmm. Helpful for that because it's like, what do I do every day? Yeah, so we're trying to think of. Uh a daily routine is going to be really helpful too because uh, you and I were talking about this a little earlier is I think when you first start learning Clinkit it, it's sort of like the the plan is, is fairly you know you're trying to get these chunks of language everything is kind of new or maybe you maybe you've heard it quite a bit but now you learn it a little different but it's sort of like you're learning these the names of a whole bunch of things and then once you start getting that process like okay here's this name and here's this phrase and I can plug this into this phrase but then to move from that and I feel like uh, this is the point where we start to get there where we're becoming speakers of Clinkit and that means we want to be able to start putting things together and then increasing the chances that we understand what we're hearing so on a day-to-day -day basis I think try to use the language all the time even if you're just talking to yourself because that's going to reveal things that you don't know how to say. And then go into your resources and figure out how to say that. Or, you know, come and we'll try and figure it out. And if we can't, we'll go ask 
uh, some of the old people who can and help us out with those things. And then also there's just things you can do where you're just using the language. I think things that are helpful, uh, even just walking around and counting to 10 and then back down to one. Uh, because then we just, we just gotta think about the order of some of these things. Um, try and describe things as you see them. I remember I, would, I hit this phase where I was trying to challenge myself and I would see something. I go, yeah, I wonder how to say, how would I say that? And to be able to just sort of walk around on the day-to-day -day basis because one of the challenges is if you get stuck into classroom language and then you know all this stuff that we use in here, but when it's you're just sort of walking out, it, it gets a little challenging. Okay, but yeah, trying to find uh, a daily routine I think really helps because the other thing is you might, everybody gets busy, all these other things might come up and next thing you know, um, you know, you're doing stuff when we're together, but what's the thing that keeps you in it between the times that we're together? And so, and you also have to remember, you are, unless you know a speaker and you can go and visit them or you can visit with each other, which I really highly encourage, but if that's not an option, then you have to manufacture that environment. Uh, listening to Clink It. Uh, and, and the other thing is there's a bunch of recordings. You could download them, listen to them. Uh, and pick some of your favorites and listen to them repeatedly because your brain's gonna really do a lot with that information. Uh, I had a student one time and, and he said, I listened to all the recordings. I listened to them all. I need new ones. I said, boy, there's so much wonderful stuff there. And so some of them, if you, uh, if you go to clinkitlanguage.com and you go to uh, resources and audio. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff. There's stories here uh, from Cyril George and George Davis and David Katzik. And then here's a conversation between two uh, elders. This is Ida Kalmegan and Bessie Cooley. Uh, a couple from Marge Dudson, Norman James. Some stories from Sam Johnston. And then here's some of the stuff from the published work of the Downhower. So here's the uh, the mosquito story, the uh, strongman story, Cots, uh, the first uh, white man, uh, the speech by Natla, which is in the Hatu Nagu Yis, a few raven stories, and then there's also some longer things. And so these are longer things that people have asked me for, and so I just put them up there. They're like, hey, do you have this? And so some of these are pretty pretty long recordings. Uh, there's also this, yeah, this is all online. So this is clinkitlanguage.com. Uh, you can also, under the resources tab, go to Raven Book. And there's just a whole bunch of Raven stories here, including uh, uh, Frank Italio and Austin Hammond. Uh, this one, it says Raven and Fog, but it's actually, when we tell the Raven stories, they call it Yeshkashnik. Yeshkatnik is a, a raven story. Yeshkutak. Yeshkutak means the whole, a whole cycle of raven stories. But they would also say, like I heard um, in a recording, Kajakti, uh, Walter Sobolov, saying uh, something like, it started to become a raven cycle. So there, it's a big word that we use. Uh, and so some of these, the Frank Italia ones, uh, the Susie James, like they're, they're about an hour long and they're, they're just incredible. And you can just listen to them. And, and you gotta challenge yourself continuously because sometimes you're not gonna wanna even put that on because it's kind of intimidating. Sometimes you'll listen to it and you're like, I don't understand anything, so I'll just go do something different. Or you'll, you'll find yourself tuning out in a wide variety of ways. I think this is the point where our, the, the English side of our brain does a lot of pushback. And, and sometimes that pushback is sort of real, you know, like a deliberate and obvious, like a, like a toddler who doesn't want to do something. But other times it's really sneaky. It's just like, well, yeah, well, you know, you listen to this clinket recording, but now I'm going to get you to start thinking about like, 
laundry or just, just like all these crazy little things that might happen. But having these and, and also picking a few of your faves, uh, for most of these on the Raven Cycle, uh, I could give you the translations for them too. So uh, I have, I'll, eventually I'll probably start putting some of the translations out there. Although we get into some copyright issue stuff. Uh, let me just see if I'm missing anything. Are there any helpful ways that can help figure out when a verb is shortened or lengthened, or does it just become easier to identify over time? So verbs uh, go through regular changes when you change the mode. So the, by mode, uh, what we what we mean with uh, uh, the recordings of the biographies aren't in Clinket. I don't know where the their only biography. In Hakasi, the only clinket that I know of is Austin Hammond in the back talking about the clan houses and, and the, the settling of the Chilku area. And I don't know where that recording is, but I could probably look for it. But some of the recordings from Hashuka are there, and eventually we'll try to find them all. Uh, but like, so we take this one for writing. So there's rules to all of this stuff, which we're going to, we'll get to the modes. and so. The roadmap I generally have is we start sort of learning more verbs and we start also more closely analyzing the verbs that we've already learned. Uh, and then we start changing the objects and the subjects in them. So, you know, I'm writing, you're writing, y'all are writing, we're writing, he or she's writing, they're writing, people are writing. Uh, and then from the writing wouldn't really work, but one that might work good would be, uh, well, you could use tech if you wanted to. So you'd say, uh, uh, I'm kicking it, uh, you're kicking it. But then you could say, uh, she or he is kicking me. Uh, she or he is kicking you. Kicking y'all. Kicking us, kicking people, um, and so that's kind of a violent verb. But so really, all we do is we learn how to change the object and the subject. So we get used to changing those because that's a lot of stuff that that you end up doing. And then we start learning about these different verb modes. So what happens when you use the perfective? What happens when you use the future? Uh, what, how how can you predict these things? The future is when it gets long. Those are the verbs that tend tend to get the longest. And we'll look at some of those. And so uh, there's other sort of verb modes that we, like, you know, to let him or her do that, or let me do it, let us. So this is why you say nach tu ot. There's very specific things that get activated in the verb to put it into those modes. Uh, nuch, to say always does it. The perfective, perfective habitual, to say like, uh, every single time, um, and then also some of these other uh, attributed, these potentials are kind of interesting, and then the conditional and the repetitive imperfective, but you, those ones you learn how to use later, and if you look at speakers when they're telling, when they're making big speeches or they're telling big stories, you're kind of expected to use some of these things, and so you'll see some really you know, if, if you really analyze the way that Raven talks, he uses lots of potentials and hortatives and, and stuff that people don't really use. And so potential just means might. So, you know, but you're going to say, and you're going to see that there's a few different ways. Uh, so you see this one, and that means there's no way that she or he can write it. But you could also say, Maybe he or she is going to write it, uh, and then uh, so it's it's just this really sort of maybe type of thing. Other check-in type things. How's it going? What do you need? It's your chance to vent, it's your chance to explore.
Yeah, yeah, yachyati is to be like something. So you could say, um, and then there's there's a bunch of things that you could do with that. So if we look up uh, t, and, and so the verb root, the verb root contains meaning. So what this website shows us is it shows us the verb root t, and then uh, there's a number after, well, there's a h after it. The H tells us that this is what we call a fading root, and that has to do with uh, what the tone and the, the length of the root is going to do in these particular modes. The number one means that there's actually more than one T, and they're different. They just, they're homonyms. They just mean different things. So there's a T which is to be. There's a T which is to carry general objects, and there's a T uh, to to wear something, and then there's a T to imitate. And so those are the sort of the, the three different ones. I guess four? I don't know. Um, and so if we look at T, and there are certain verb roots where there's, there's a million of them, right? So this is one of the ones with lots of them. But what you'll see is that the verb itself sometimes isn't changing a whole lot. So th the way you make a new verb in Clinkit is you can either change the classifier and that becomes a different verb. You can add a thematic prefix or change it. Now it becomes a different verb. Or there's some verbs where you just add some things in front of it and now it's become a new verb. So we see to be like something. Um, so l let's say, for example, we're teaching a bunch of kids something. And you could say, uh, you're gonna, we're going to walk around like a brown bear. So you could say, Hoots yach yinate. Be like a brown bear. Or you could say, Tok yach yinate. Be like an eagle. Uh, and then yach yati would mean it's just like that. And this is the exact one we use when we talk about colors. Gleit yach yati. Tuch yach yati. Hoot yach It was like a whirlpool. Um, and then there's, there's different ways. We see Inati and yachyati. But what's interesting is if we see to like uh, to need something, uh yati uti wuti wuti is that that yati part is gonna be the exact same. So when we move to perfective or future, it's gonna go through the same process. So we see uh wuti for the perfective. And then we go back to this, and we see wuti for the perfective. So that verb itself has not changed. There's just stuff in front of it. And now it's, it's got a different meaning. Uh, another one that's similar to that is you could say uh, to, to, to have stopped. Kleye ye inati. Be still. Kleye ye wuti. But the verb itself conjugates exactly the same. So sometimes you're just remembering some specific information that goes in front of the verb. And that makes it just a, kind of a different meaning. Uh, to live somewhere, right? Uh, and I could say, you know, go be in Skagwish. And then you see here, wu ti. So the sa it's the same verb, but there you just add some things in front of it, and now it's the meaning has changed. Anything else? Well, just remember that you can ask, you know, if you're, if you, some particular thing you want to work on, you want to figure some of these things out. If some of the things we talk about are leading to other questions, certainly just bring it up in class, and then uh, we can always go take a look at some things. Uh, the other thing is, as you're sort of, this website is so useful uh, because you can also search things. You can take a look, uh, talk. And then there's just some concept things. 
uh, like tag. Uh, there's one like ye tag um, with a zero classifier. So this could mean to bite, like to bite somebody, but it could also be uh, to chew gum, right? And so there's there's these things that are going to be. Uh, we just got to think about what is, how does the concept work in Clinkit? How would we describe this type of action or this type of uh, activity? Um, Okay. Okay. So let's kind of think again about how verbs uh, work, right? So we, we did a little bit of this uh, the other day and wanted to sort of touch on it a little bit more just in case we need to sort of go into things in more detail. So thinking about the order of these things and, and just really getting this order straight in our mind because we're going to start to uh, change things and we got to remember where these things are. Um, so we say, uh, That phrase was told to me by Kanak Ruth Demert, uh, our language is getting stronger. And then I got this little drawing that says, I'm going to try, I'm going to succeed. I'm going to try, I'm going to succeed. And then it says, um, your brain power. Right, because we're getting into this realm where there's a lot of processing power. There's a lot of things that have to go on in our mind because we're going to have to start keeping track of a whole bunch of stuff. We're trying to enter into these realms where there's just a whole bunch of clinking coming at us all at once. Uh, and so... These are some things, just trying to think of these brain exercises to do. Because other things you could do while you have time, and like let's say you dedicate specific parts of your day to studying Clinkit. You could just say, oh man, I, I, gotta, I gotta learn a bunch of names for birds. Like let's say you just walk around and you see all these birds. You're like, what's that one? What's that one? What's that one? And, and so the, another thing you could do is do some exercises where you sort of look at some animals and you just describe them. What is this thing like? What does it look like? What are its behaviors? How could I explain some of these things? Um, and then another thing that you could do is you could take some of these published stories that are in the Dauenhauer books, and you've got the translation there, and here's the clinket. Can you figure out how to get there if, if you were translating this stuff? And can you sort of see the inner workings? Because you'll see too, the translator makes so many different decisions about how this stuff works. Uh, and so it's really neat to kind of explore those realms. You improve it with, by using Clinkit, right? So Clinkit makes things better. And so this was something that Nora told us. And then she said, uh, go find the people who know and ask if it's okay to be by them. So whenever we're looking at the structure of the language, uh, we keep in mind this, this order. We should know this order. We should always just keep this in our mind. There's some, sometimes stuff in the pre-verb like ye or you. Um, sometimes you'll get like an adverb that'll pop up right there. Kedain, Kedzin dain, tich dain, any of those types of things. Kach, kunach, those are all they pop up in the preverb. We call it the preverb because it means it comes before the verb, but it ha it's attached to it because you need to, it affects the meaning of it, right? Object, thematic, conjugation, subject, classifier, stem. So the object is who the verb is happening to. There's a couple exceptions. Uh, like you say, ha shu wa we ran. And so that, in that case, we're using an object pronoun. Uh, but for the most part, the object is usually the one that the thing happens to. Thematic, there doesn't have to be a thematic thing there, but some verbs have them, and you can't forget them. Right? So you, if you can't say, if the verb is kach uh, shahit, I'm writing, the ka part has to stay in there. So you can't say khoshahit. Because now you're talking about furrowing a field, not writing with a pencil. So 
but the thematic is different than the other things that are there because it has specific meaning. Ka is on, ya is the vertical surface, and we'll see how these work with, with some specific verbs. In between the thematic and the subject is where the conjugation stuff comes. So if you're going to put it into the future, if you're going to make it perfective, then this is, that's where those things are going to pop up. So there's like these certain spots there that can get activated to push the verb into certain modes. And so what we start learning how to do is remember which ones push it into which modes. And then we start to, to use them. So we know it needs a perfective marker. And if it's going to be a positive perfective, then the classifier will be plus i. And that's a combination. Then there's other things that come around it. Subject is the one who does the verb. Uh, so this is, you know, so a subject does it to an object. And when, when we look at a verb, you know, this shows us uh, there's an object there, but there's no subject. So we cannot add a subject if it's not in the theme. Uh, so here's, uh, this has an object and a subject to toast something, right? So if we look at this and we say, oh yeah, I know where those objects are in those subjects, like to fry it. Uh, and then there's a, a, a bunch of verbs where they have an object, but it's pretty much always going to be third person because it's going to be it. Because uh, you could say, uh, I'm going to fry you, or you know, you're frying me, but that's kind of unusual language. So there's things like digging and gardening and uh, writing. Uh, and so usually that third, but we have to remember that it's there because we're going to get this A in the third person. Okay. Then you're going to get the classifier. Uh, and we should talk about the classifier a little bit today. Um, what it does, why it changes, how it, that change is predictable. And then there's the stem. And the stem is made up of two things, the root and the stem variation. So the root has the meaning. Like for example, if we go back to this verb to, uh, to write, the verb root has meaning. Oops. And the meaning here uh, is actually to furrow, to, to make, to make a, a trench kind of a thing. Um, and then the classifier, um, oh, sorry, not the classifier, but so what the stem variation does is says what the vowel is going to be. So we just keep an eye on that. Let me zoom in here. So this one, short and high. This one, long and low, long and low, long and low, short and high, long and low, long and high, long and low, short and high, right? So it can, there's only three variations, short and high, long and low, long and high. And so this is, that's the sort of the last step of learning how to use verbs, I think, is looking at that stem variation. There's a few different things that can uh, push it into, you know, every verb has a stem variation, and then the conjugation type and the mode tell us what it's going to do. So here's our objects. So let's just say them so we can stop listening to me and start sort of practicing some things. Chat. Ha. Ha. I. I. Ye. Ye. And then that's a zero or an A. Ka. Ka. At. At. Chush. Chush. Uh, and the chush is usually just the SH. Right? And so as, as we go through there, we've got me, us, you, you all, her, him, or it, which will be zero unless the subject is also third person, then it will be the A. Right? That's why you say. Um, she or he is writing it. Ka or k, um, it's k a lot of times. Unless there's a specific weather verb for it, then it'll tend to be ka. At is something, and then chush or sh is to the self. So this is why you say, I'm teaching it to myself. 
Um, and then there's uh, the people who respect themselves. Uh, and so there's, there's a number of things that you'll see. Uh, I saw myself like in a mirror. So here's some, uh, some verbs. So we can learn a whole bunch of state verbs. Um, and so we'll look at some after this. But let's just say these ones. Ha yak a ha yak a 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 and so there's some of them like at yak a you probably wouldn't use a whole lot but um, so for example let's take uh, So let's say to be wet. So here it is. It has an object. Uh, it's going to be a, a D classifier. So we could see it here. Here's the perfective. Would the tuck. So once we see would the tuck, now we can start changing that. So if we go back, uh, let's see, let's see if I do this. So here's the wudituk. In the background here, we can see our pronouns that we're going to go down through. And so just to say, like, wet. Chat um, wudituk. How dituk. So the, the, the one thing to think of, if it ends with a vowel, it's going to cause some contraction there. So we go from wudituk to uh, how did tuck, right? So that collapses this W. Ew did tuck. You did tuck. Would did tuck. Who did tuck. At would did tuck. Hus would did tuck. And then the, uh, the answer to the, the other question, which was how do you write? Uh, that that shall would uh, where oh, I guess they're separated. It's right there, sorry. Shia a wudaniki. So this is something you'll hear people say in speeches. Shia uh, wudaniki. And then Anya Kusani is another thing that say. Shia wudaniki would be the singular one. So you also see this has turned into a noun, and so the is the pluralizer. Shawudaniyi would be a respectable, an honorable person. Shawudaniyi would be honorable people. Yeah. So when we go back to the him, her, or it uh, in the letter A, it's a zero and less. And so uh, a good place to find an example of this, like how does this thing work? Um, there's this chapter in How Seneich, uh, kind of back towards the end, that has these uh, combinations of having a third person on there. Uh, and so let me get to... So whenever there's a third person subject and a third person object, right? So let me try to find the right one. This is it. 
So here's a bunch where uh, so this shows you the object. And so uh, this chapter is just showing you how to change the subject and the object, right? And so the basic format is this is to love someone. That's what the verb is. And the way that this is uh, put together is you can see the subject is staying the same. This is all first person subject. And then we're going to change the object from third person singular, third person plural, second person singular, second person plural, fourth person human, fourth person non-human. And then it'll switch to a different subject. So if we go through um, and we see uh, the third person uh, subject. So we see khat sikhan. Uh, she or he loves me. Ha sikhan. She or he loves us. Isakhan. She or he loves you. Yi sikhan. She or he loves you all. Qusakhan. Uh, at sikhan. My third person. Well, the third, here it is. Third person. So if they're both third person, the object must switch to the letter A or else we can't tell that it's there. So we get asikhan. So that's, that's one of those kind of tricky things. And so whenever you have the third person uh, object, right? So when we look at that, for example, khasikhan, I love him or her. There's nothing there for the object. When we look at it, we get a zero marker, khasikhan. And we just know the third person is there. It doesn't have to, you know, so it'd be like in English, you'd say, I love you, I love them, I love y'all, I love, and then we know that we're talking about him or her, right? And that's just how clink it works, is you get the zero, so it's just sort of the default kind of thing. But then, um, and then you got, so uh, the page for this one is 241, and the chapter, uh, let me pull that back out. So this is an object, it's chapter 16. And so this is one that we're going to get to this kind of kind of soon, because now this is the point we're just sort of showing what all these things are. But it gets confusing if you keep it too abstract. So we're actually going to move into this thing um, that I call the conjugation party, where we're just going to learn how to conjugate these things in a whole bunch of different ways. And then uh, we get to... Uh, there's a few different sort of drills that we go through. So like I'm tying it, you're tying it, and we also learn some new verbs doing this. And then, um, and then the hope is that, that now you can apply these patterns because even though Clinkit has a whole bunch of stuff, once you learn how to manipulate that prefix, you're, you're just changing the root and the classifier. You know, and the classifier is part of the prefix. And so you, you just, you really start to learn how to do this stuff. It takes a lot of, uh, really active learning, so you've got to just try, and you got to like, we'll do these drills together, and then you got to go into Carrie's work, and then start to look at it, and pick a verb, and then just write it in all these different combinations, and, and it's a lot of sort of legwork and nerdy brain work, but you, you got to do that in order to push this stuff inside until it's natural, and then when it's natural, you could just sort of say those types of things, and then there's certain verbs, uh, like there's one that a lot of us uh, probably know, and it's neek is the verb root. And the verb root really means to tell or to, uh, to give news. I think it would be just to inform or to give news or tell a story, to gossip. Uh, and so uh, this one, so we say the object, so when we're looking at this thing and it's telling us information about the verb, we have the object, it's got a k thematic prefix, which is on the surface of something. We've got a s, which is a subject, a zero group classifier, and then neek. Okay, that, let's just stick with that for now. There's, there's some other information that it's telling us, uh, but we're not going to worry about that right now. So we get the, and then we get the definition for the subject to tell about, report about, give facts about the object, for us to witness to, testify about the object, right? 
So for this one, we can, and so this one shows us, right? So let's just go through these where we're changing the subject. Okay, so I am telling about it, uh, and this is like, when, when we think about how this verb works, it's like, I'm giving you the scoop. I'm giving the information on this. So this could be, and it could be all kinds of things, right? Like I, I use this for my kids. I'll be like, um, go tell your sister that dinner's ready. Do in kananik yenuwane hana atai. Do in kananik yenuwane hana atai. And then they run in there and they tell, right? And so that's the kananik, uh, that's the command form. Khan kananik. Tell me, Khan Kananik, Wasa Atwune Tatke, tell me what happened yesterday. Khan Kananik, Wasa Atwune An Ka, tell me what happened in town. Khan Kananik, We An Kanigi, tell me the news or the gossip from town. Hastu in Kananik, Wanaksawe, Shling, get your Katangish to touch to Tultu. Sorry. Tell them why we're studying Klinkit. Right, so this is the telling, right, to give that information. So we'll go through, I'm telling it, uh, you're telling it. And so the, the way we organize things sometimes is a little different. Akishabu likes to do singulars first and then plurals and then fourth person. I usually like to do first person, singular, plural, second person, singular, plural. Uh, so we'll just, and then what you'll see though is the root is staying the same. Neek, 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 neek. You have to have the K in there. And then when you get to the third person, the letter A pops up in front of it. Okay. Kachanik. 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 Kinik. Akanik. Akanik. Katunik. Katunik. Kainik. Kainik. Has a kanik. Has a kanik. Kadunik. Kadunik. And so this is just like Kadunik. You could also translate as people are talking about it. Right? Yeawe Kadunik. Wearable art show, right? People are talking about what happened at the wearable art show. Um, so the other thing is this one has an object, and usually the object is just it. But if this changes, you get a slightly different, it's, it's the same verb, but the meaning is a little bit different. Like if I said, Khatkanik. Khatkanik would mean she or he is tattling on me. They're telling about what I did. And it's usually like to tattletale, right? You know, like I was, I don't know, I don't know what I was doing. But was naughty probably, and then I'm being tattled on. Uh, the other thing is so we can move into the perfective to just sort of, we don't have to think about how all the parts work, but we'll just see some things that change. So we go from kacha to kachwa. We go from neek, high and long, to neek, long and low, right? So there's, it just has a different shape. But you know, the first step is to memorize these things and just say, oh yeah, oh yeah, I remember how to say that, right? I said it, she or, she or he said it, you said it, right? And so, uh, and then there's other things you can learn from this. Thank you for telling me. Right? That's the way she or he told it to us. This is how people have told it to me. And so this is something you might use if you're telling a story. So like, yeah. That is how achin do in like to me, to you, to him or her. A kawanik, right? Kawduanik. It was told. Uh, we'll we'll say these and then we'll look at. I think there's one sample sentence on here which is really fun. And then we'll take a break. 
Kachwanik. Kachwanik. Kianik. Kianik. Akawanik. Akawanik. Kautuanik. Kautuanik. Kayinik. Kayinik. Hasakawanik. Hasakawanik. Kauduanik. Kauduanik. So the fourth person, that just means somebody does it or it happens. Right? So the way that we think about that is we use it in English. We probably just don't overthink it. But the ways that it gets used in English uh, is usually if nobody wants to take the blame. Right? So you think of kids, like say it's my favorite coffee cup, and I come in and it's broken, and uh, my kids have been playing, and I'm like, What happened? And they'll say, it, it was broken, right? And so, and this would be the same thing. Like, let's say, uh, let's say I'm a terrible person, or, you know, maybe I'm not. And the, we, we got this gathering, and we're all going to get together and eat. And somebody brought, like, this tray of really delicious, like, cookies. And then everybody stepped out for a second and came back. But I was still in the room, and the cookies are gone. And someone would be like, what happened? I'm like, they got eaten, right? And so this, it's a way to sort of remove. Sometimes it's used for that, but it's also just to say, like, it's a thing that happened. And in Klinkit, it's used quite a bit, quite a bit for, like, people do it, it happens. Uh, and I think there's a sample sentence on here that has it. <laughs> I love that sentence because it's just funny. Nobody tells me anything. Uh, and that's a pretty fun uh, sample sentence. So you have tesh for not. And what you're going to see is once you've got the not on there, it's talking about the verb. So it pushes the verb into a negative, right? So this is to not. And then you have achin would be to me, uh, in to you, duin to him or her, ha'in to us. Hastu'in uh, to them, yi'in to y'all, ka'in to people. And then you have at kadunik. And so once you have the at in there, this is another important switch. Is sometimes if the object changes to at, it just has this special meaning. right? So like at kadunik is just the thing that is talked about by people. And this kadunik, we could find it right up here. It's a negative imperfective kesh kadunik and so kesh kadunik would also this if we just sort of pull it out of that sample sentence kesh kadunik like let's say I'm telling you some kind of this story right and I'm just saying people don't talk about it kesh kadunik wasa atwune people don't talk about what happened hadat ke naki dehau shagas People don't talk about what happened to us when we were migrating north. Uh, so these are ways you can start. So these are the things we're trying to do. Is, is uh, There's these multiple parts we're trying. Is one, we're trying to figure out how these different parts fit together, what they mean, what they do. Then we're also trying to fit bigger pieces together in the context of being able to use language on a larger basis. So that when we move into these immersions, uh, we're able to sort of be a little more fluid and, and you know I think it's a it's almost like when someone learns how to drive a stick shift and it's real it's herky jerky at first but then it starts to go smooth that's what you hope okay take uh, take about seven minutes and we'll come back and we'll we'll try something we'll, we'll see what you guys want we keep doing the same thing we'll try something different to you guys All right, so what is going to be, what's your preference right now? You guys want to keep doing this type of stuff? Option, that's option A. Option B would be uh, doing a whole bunch of these objects, subject things. We could start just sort of looking at that. 
Option C would be to go back to our little readings book and just practice some little bit of translation work. Uh, option D would be to just do a walk through the beginning clink it without using any English, just to sort of push us into this sort of highly guided immersion thing where I'll just go through the drills and um, we'll just sort of walk through this whole thing. So I get one vote for B, which was doing these object subject combinations. Anybody else? Does that sound okay? Yeah, I like B. B, okay. So, uh, yeah, okay. So we have three for B, so we'll, we'll do that. And we can we come back to their stuff later. So here's a little graphic. This is, I made the graphic specifically for this exercise. And I want to uh, acknowledge and thank the folks up in Yakutat with the, their immersion team. They're starting a language nest right now. We did our language nest activity today. It's so fun, but so hard to try and push little kids to just be totally in the language for uh, long stretches of time. But I test drove this uh, both with previous Clinkit language classes and also up in Yakutat, just trying to think of how to get us to this point where we're just kind of drilling this stuff. Uh, so coming back, what does the classifier do? It's, it's, it's a complex thing because it does a lot of things, but it's not really that hard. It's just it's something that English has no equivalent for. But if you studied other Nadine languages like Navajo or Apache or Gwich'in or Koyukon or Iyak, they would probably have some form of this. They would have a classifier and it comes right before the root. And so it has some functions. The first function is the group. Which group is it going to be? And so uh, we'll zoom on this a little bit here. So the group we have the zero group, the S group, the L group, the SH group. Okay, they, and once it belongs to a group, it cannot leave the group unless it becomes a different verb. So that is defined by the verb itself. Okay, so generally, they have a little bit of meaning. The zero group is the default. Like yati is to be that way. Yanik is sick. Uh, and so we see, as soon as we see the ya, popping up right before the verb root, that's usually a pretty good signal that it's a zero group classifier, right? Khatin, ayatin, ayatin, she or he sees it, right? Ayatin, she or he sees it. The reason the classifier would change is it creates a new verb that just does something similar. For example, um, yanik is I'm sick, khat Yisinik, you made me sick. Chet yak e, I'm good. Chet yisik e, you made me better. Uh, uh, and so one, one thing that it might change to say instead of the verb just happening, somebody's making it happen. That's one reason why the classifier would change. It's a very common thing. So you have uh, somebody, the, I'm good, somebody made me good. It's good, somebody improved it. Uh, uh, I'm sick, you made me, you gave me a cold, right? You got me sick. So that's one reason why the classifier would change, because somebody does it. Another reason why the classifier would change was to use classifications, which is why it's called the classifier, right? So you'd say, uh, gay, it's big. Shagay, it's a big living creature. Ya and sh. Uh, you could have awachut, awachut. She or he drug it. Awsachut, she or he drug it by a handle. So it's just sort of saying it's a different type of thing. Uh, and so we'll see a whole bunch of this stuff. Clinket is always classifying things. And that's why, they, that's why it is called a classifier. Uh, and so then that's those are the two sort of main reasons why the classifier would move between a group it's either classifying or it's just saying it's not just happening but somebody's actually making it happen 
And the other thing for just sort of creating different categories of different types of things, a zero group classifier to see, khatin, I see. So if I say kait khatin, what I'm communicating to you is I see a dog, kait khatin. But if it's this dog that I've been telling you about that comes and poops in my yard every day, we kait Chosetin. I see that specific dog. And this is why you say, Ichsetin. I see you. You're a specific thing. And then I could say, now I could jump to the L group with the same type of verb, Yaketl aya kakoshetin. The th is to watch something. So they're seeing, seeing something specific, watching something. And so as we sort of learn more verbs, just take note, what, kind of, what is the classifier? And just start sort of building that inventory. Uh, I've got some sheets that I can share with you next week that show a whole bunch of verbs listed by classifier, by, you know, I try to organize them a few different ways. The second thing that the classifier has is, as you see this illustration, minus i, plus i. Okay, so it has two forms. Zero and ya, sa and se, sha and se, sha and sh. What that is telling you is if it goes plus i, that means the verb happened. If minus i means the verb didn't happen. That's, that's all that thing does. It's just like a little light switch to say, oh yeah, that happened. Oh wait, that didn't happen. It's almost always minus i, unless you really, unless, you know, almost all these verb modes the classifiers in minus i. So I made this list, and here's, here's the verb modes, and it, and it says what, you know, what that translates to. Uh, and so all the minus i's, you know, so it's uh, imperfectives, uh, you know, and so there, there's just these things, and we'll learn. We'll learn them as we see more of them. This is what the classifier should be. And the last thing is plus d and minus d. If you ever put chush in front of it, or whoosh, it should go plus d. It just, and, and it, what plus d sometimes means is the subject is also the object. Right? And so this is another thing that English doesn't have, but lots of other languages do. I see myself. So I say, irsetin, I see you. Shchedzetin, I see myself. So shchodzetin, sorry, shchodzetin. So it goes from se to z, And so we see that here, from se to z, It just drops down one. So we'll, we'll come back to that, but you know, that's basically what the classifier does. It does a couple other things, but that's probably enough for now. So here's the big sort of chart that shows that other stuff that we were looking at, but this is just adding a couple more. It's like clink, it's like here, here's this, here's the, they, they did this when they taught us Hawaiian. Is, you know, we're like, oh yeah, it's like this. And they said, did they tell you about this? We're like, what? There's more? And, and so this is, this is almost everything sort of laid out there. There's a couple different things that we'll talk about later. I, I want to focus on objects and subjects right now. Uh, the classifier we touched on. Every verb also has a conjugation prefix. We'll talk about it later. You don't have to worry about it now. And there's also five different verb types. We'll talk about that later. Don't worry about it right now. Okay. So here we go. Doing a walkthrough of these. Uh, we're going to start by getting dirty. So this is, uh, there's an object. There's no subject. So this is just a state verb to be dirty. There's a very similar verb, which would mean to make it dirty, right? Why did you get this dirty? Uh, and then we see up here, it shows us the perfective form. Uh, so there's going to be an object, the perfective marker, the th is going to be the classifier, and ch. This gives us all the information we need to know. We're just going to change the objects. The class of, you know, the, the perfective marker is there. Classifier will stay th this whole time. The vowel will be short and high. So with that, anybody want to predict how to say, I am dirty. Good. 
Okay, say the say uh, say it one more time. Yeah, that's very good. But we got to get that perfective marker on there, the w. So if we add the w before the shechech, that is totally correct. Chat w shechech. Chat w shechech. Chat w shechech. Chat w shechech. Because <laughs> Chish, uh, Zisk is the only one in the classroom today, so she's on for the voice of the class. Anybody want to guess how to say, you are dirty? You are dirty. You are dirty. You are so um like we talked about if it if that object ends with a vowel it's gonna cause some contraction so in this case uh, it's gonna cause the w to contract to just the W so these are some patterns we start to look for and so basically we say where's the root and the root is uh, right here so how many things are to the left of it is one the classifier uh, wu is another which is the perfective marker I is the third one if there's three things you're going to end up with some contraction the exception would be any of the objects that end with the consonant so we see khat doesn't do it so, somebody tell me how to say she, he, or it is dirty. Do, do, lecher. Not do, Not because the do would be his, it's like, that's his cup. Do, mm -hmm. gucha. Okay. Oh, Wu, lecher. Ye, awe. So remember, it's just, it, if there's no subject, the third person will always be nothing. Mm. Always, okay? Wushichech. 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 How about we are dirty? Are you guys embarrassed to be dirty? How 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 about y'all are dirty? You 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 sit You sit They are dirty. People are dirty. And so it's usually you're going to get kuh. And I haven't figured out if there's some sort of pattern, but I would guess kuh 90% of the time. There's ka. I don't think, I think you could say kao shechech, but I don't, I don't know. So this one is the kuh part, which is people. And then we see that when it, when kuh meets the perfective, you're always going to get the underlying K-O-O-W, like Kudziti was born, Kudziti exists. Kushichech. 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 
<laughs> so this one is going into a perf into a uh, perfective as well. So this is to have cooked something, uh, and so it's already cooked. Uh, it's not really a time thing. It's just that it has reached that state. So we see object, perfective, subject. The classifier is going to be se, and it's going to be e. So it should end with se e every time. So that's the se classifier. E is long and high. There is an object on this, so when we get to the third person, we should expect that the letter A to pop up instead of the zero marker. Okay? So, if that's what we've got, perfective, subject, C, and E, anybody want to tell me I cooked it? But the, it can't be the letter A because it's only going to be the third person that's going to have the letter A. Other than that, it'll always be a zero. Chosei. 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 Okay. You cooked it. Isse'i. Uh, Isse'i would be you are cooking it. So we're going to, whenever we have that perfective marker on the front, we're going to get ye. So this is the, this is the, se the first, the second person singular with a perfective marker. Yisei. 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 And there are certain things in Clinkit that that needs to be in the perfective form. And one that I hear quite a bit, which is just a slight adjustment. So a lot of times we'll say, Chwaseku, for I know. And once we hear Chwase, we know that it's perfective because that W is coming right after the X. So if the perfective mark, the perfective marker has to be there for that one because it has to achieve that, you have to know it in order to know it, right? So a lot, I hear a lot of people say, Isekuge, like I S I K O O, with a high tone. But it should be Yesekuge, because we should hear that perfective right at the beginning. So if it's a perfective verb, yese is what we expect. Yak a, she or he cooked it. And I also I want to sort of just say, don't be afraid of getting it wrong. Not at all. Not, uh, not one bit, because you have to keep trying it because your brain starts putting it together. And, and if, you, if you don't want to try, you don't, certainly don't have to. But don't feel like uh, something bad has happened because we've gotten it wrong, because we're really just learning these patterns. And we're breaking them apart, and we're also putting them together in our brain. And we're also learning multiple, we're kind of doing perfective, imperfective, and then um, the subjects and objects at the same time. So. It, this is this is the process, and, and I think just sort of throwing it out there helps everybody and it helps the process move along. So, cheesh. We cooked it. That is, we were cooked, oh. right? So oh, the tragic. right, yeah. So, <laughs> but that that's great, and so this we we can make these fun mistakes. But the ha is it happened to us. Right, so we don't want to get cooked, but what what is the subject version of the we? What to see? Absolutely. What to see? What to see? What to see? What to see? 
Watuse e. So this and so now if you have any sort of verb that has an S classifier, it's gonna be Watuse every single time. Watuse, Watuse, Watuse. Then the root's gonna change. Right? So this is this is how we start internalizing these patterns. And it's also gonna be Hwase, Yese, Ause, right? So for example, like if we say uh, let's, let's, we'll do that at the end. I'll, I'll change the verb root on you and show you how it's the same. Y'all cooked it. Ye se e. Ye se e. Yi se yi. It's another. It's another familiar pattern. That y e e y. Yi sateen. You all see it. They cooked it. We gotta keep that A on there. Hasausei. 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 So one of the secrets, you know, as we learn this pattern building, whenever we get the third person for she or he did it, to go from there to they, all we do is add has and the rest stays the same. Okay, it was cooked. Now I'm going to give you this one because it's a little tricky. So, there's another verb uh, to see things. Like I could say, right? So teen is going to be the root. It's going to be long and low. So to say, like, I saw it, right? So, or the verb is going to be to have, to have seen it. So now we're going to go from top to bottom. Chwasatin. Yisatin. Ausatin. Wutusatin. Yisatin. How about to know something, right? So to know something, we're going to get siku. It's going to end long and high. Khwasiku. Yisiku. Ausiku. Wutusiku. Yisiku. Hasausiku. Wududziku. So this shows you that the, the pattern of the prefix, once you learn it, it's always, it just, it's, it, there's only so many options. There's a lot of options, but it's limited. And so once you sort of get it, now you just sort of, you can apply that pattern to a whole bunch of different verbs. So it's not like one exercise is learning a whole bunch of useful verbs, but another exercise is taking this pattern and just going out and get a bunch of S classifier verbs that have an object in the subject. So the other thing is there's another sneaky rule in here, and here it is. For the fourth person subject, every non-zero classifier will switch to the plus D version. So for the fourth person, a non-zero classifier, S group, L group, SH group, must be the plus D version. So you're going to get Z, Dl, and J. Every zero classifier must stay minus D. It's just a weird sort of thing, but that's why it switches to Wududze E, Wududzeku. Wududzeku would translate as it is known. Wududze E, it was cooked. Wududze it was seen. Yeah, yeah, it's catch the two or school. 
Budzutini. Kaawakatena Waha. Not Katein, he's like Taka Waha. Raven doesn't want to be seen when he's, well, he's Awakako. He's pigging out. Ah, ah, he doesn't like people to watch him eat. Okay, any questions? Thoughts? Everybody okay? The subject is it, right? Or is the subject the pronoun? The sub well, the subject is the pronoun. Like, this is who is doing it. The other part where it gets kind of funky is when you put the fourth person in there, it really just means it happened. People did it, right? It's just kind of a funky, right? Yeah. So like, ha, yeah, right? Ha, I ate it. Yicha, you ate it. Awacha, he or she ate it. Watuacha, we ate it. Yicha, y'all ate it. Hasawacha, they ate it. Watuacha, it was eaten. Guksu. Where are my cookies? My sweet crackers. Ha! Well, they have been eaten. Right? Okay. So it, it's a lot of information, but once we just start looking at the patterns, like it, it just makes sense. It does. It falls, it kind of falls into place. Okay. So tying. Uh, this is then when we talk about tying, because it's clink it, we're talking well, what kind of tying are you doing? This is tying a knot, like your shoes. It's tying something into a knot. Because there's wrapping things, there's, there's some different types of tying. But that's what this is. So there is an object. The object will be zero, except for the third person. It's going to change to an A. We should see, we'll see that pattern again. There's a K. So there's an extra thing kind of thrown in here. And so what happens when we throw this extra thing in here? We'll see it. There's the perfective marker. Uh, there's the subject. And because it's a perfective, we're going to get the ya classifier. And then duk. So we know it's going to be duk every time, short and high. This is to tie something. We also know that when we get to the bottom with the fourth person, it's going to be it's not going to go plus D because it's a zero group classifier. So there's a whole bunch of information. So it's going to start with ka. There's going to be ka in it. The object is on the other side of it. How would I say I tied it? I tied it, right? Where does the U W go? Because the X is like cut and the Y A is W A A. That's yeah, that's a great question. So the, the perfective marker, so the thing we talk about is where the conjugation things are, right? So we go, we know, we go object, thematic, conjugation, subject, classifier, root. With the first person, though, whenever you have the perfective, so the perfective is here, y. Then we get ch. I didn't bring any markers. <laughs> ch. But whenever those two meet, it jumps to the other side and you get ch. Every, it's, that's a, one of those weird things where it just, this plus this is that for whatever reason, right? This is clinking math. And it's just gonna, that's just how it is. So you're going to end up with, um, so if we kind of scroll back, we see chwasi, and then we saw, uh, oops, so chwasi. But with, what happens here is because the classifier is ya, y plus cha plus ya, you get hua every time. Oh, man. Hooray! <laughs> this is sometimes the point, too, where you ask a question and you get an answer and you're just like, yeah, whatever. But uh, if, if we keep seeing them, it, it does make sense after a while. 
So also, if we took the ka off of there, this hua on its own, so the perfective form of ha to eat something, it goes high and long. So you go hua ha, I ate it. Uh, so any of those zero groups, you're going to get the hua. It's going to end up like that. Okay. You tied it. Anybody want to try it? So we added something new on here. Kiyaduk. 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 She or he tied it. A cow a duck. Right, so we get the A in the front. A cow a duck. A cow a duck. A cow a duck. We tied it. Cow to a duck. Cow to a duck. Cow to a duck. Y'all tied it. Cay duck. Cay duck. Cay duck. They and they tied it. Hasakawaduk 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 It was tied. Kauduaduk Kauduaduk how do we do? So the the one thing to to, to keep when we added like a the, the thematic thing on there, which kind of threw us for a loop a little bit. But the hus part, we got to keep in mind the hus part. So whenever we see the the hus in the third person, right? It's impossible to tell how that's really working. It could be they tied it. It could be. Uh, she or he tied them. Like she tied all of the shoes, right? And then it could be they tied them. You cannot tell. What you have to do is a little bit of extra work outside of the verb. So the way you usually do that is with an, what we call an ergative marker. So we might say, huch away, hasakawa duch. So hu is she or him or her. Hooch. Uh, is uh, she or he is the one that did the verb hooch uh, and then the other way you could do it is you could say husch away they did it right so that's a little complicated I wouldn't worry about it right now usually in the context you kind of get it right if it, if it gets complicated you gotta do a little bit more work Okay, so this one's a lot more straightforward. So those, those ones were getting a little complicated. So now we'll back it up and we'll just sort of do a little bit more straightforward one. So this one is an imperfective. So there's, there's no perfective marker in there anymore. Uh, there's some information that, that the verb root shows us. So the verb root is uh, right here. So there is an object. There is a subject. It's an S group classifier. And the verb root is chan. When we have this little cross thing up there, that means it's going to stay, whatever shape it's in, it's going to stay that way. That means this verb is short and high every single time. We never have to worry about the verb root changing its shape, which is pretty handy. So the imperfective form, we expect an object, a subject, se 
classifier, so that's plus i, and then chen. So, how would I say I love her, him, or it? Chasechan, yeah, away. Chasechan, Chasechan, Chasechan. Now, the other thing is uh, there's the silly movie Anchorman where the guy says, I love lamp. And you sound a little bit, I think, I think for fluent speakers, you sound a little bit like that if you'd be like, Kahwe Chasechan. That sounds like I love somebody whose name is Coffee. The way you say like, because in English we, we say love all the time. But for Klinkit, love's got to be like about, I think, it's usually about people or things. Like, maybe, ach, li chasechan, that would work. But for like some kind of food or activity, you just say, ach, tu wasagu. That's how you say like you really like something. In Klinkit. I think, just after talking with the old people about it, I kept trying to say, like, um, uh, for example, I like to dance. I love dancing. I love it. And so I would, I would say, oh, would you say, and that's just how it works. And we just have to accept that languages think about things differently. Uh, Hawaiian is the same way. We talked about this. Because, like, let's say we're, you know, we're like, how would you say, hey, I like your, I like your shirt. You'd say, And that's why you don't say those things in Klingit, because they'd be like, huh. Because it, it works like that in Hawaiian. Say, maki maki ao is, I like it, or I want it. So you'd say, maki maki ao. And the, the, the way that they explain it to us is in Hawaiian culture, then people would be like, all right, and then they'd, they'd give you their shirt, right? And then you'd leave, because, you know, like, okay. Then you'd leave, and they're like, why did they want my shirt? What's wrong with them? <laughs> yeah, so, um, it's just something to keep in mind with this verb, right? So, chesachan, I love him or her, it. Uh, oh, now we're going to change the object and the subject. So, the verb is a lot simpler, but now we're going to start moving both of these parts at the same time. You've done these. Not extensively, you've done them a couple times. But I know you're smart. I love them. Is them do? No, do is, so this is, this is a really common, this is a very common thing. People start using do in the verb. Do can only be the fourth person subject. Like people do it. But du is like du tla, du ish, du gukhayi. But that is only the possessive part. So the them, and, and so one thing that we can do, uh, I think that might be helpful, is if I pull this up. Here's all of our objects, right? So the them is the hus plus the zero or the a. Mm -hmm. And that's how it works. And so if we go back to uh, this one, it cannot be A because there's not a third person subject. It must be zero. So we expect, and it's zero in this first one. So this goes zero, cha, se, chan. Cha, se, chan. So I should predict that I'm only adding hus. Has chasechan. Has chasechan. Has chasechan. Has chasechan. I love them husses. Okay. I love you. Echsechan. 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 Is that a contraction? Yes. So when we start contracting things in Klinkit, what is most likely to contract? Ch. 
I'm going to go. I'm, I'm pretty soft. Y, the perfective marker, that's pretty soft. Those two are very likely to contract. Uh, the other things, like, it, it's really rare that the classifier, if the classifier is s, it could never contract. It, it just won't. And so you know that can't go, so then we got to find the other likely folks. And so because the third person is zero, it doesn't matter, because zero can't affect anything. But the i causes that. And so, again, it's this sort of rule of threes. If we look to the left of the verb root, we have si, ha, and i. That means something's got to go. Something's got to get small. So, uh, let me slide. Let me see if I can slide this over. I don't know if I can get them both. All right. Uh, shucks. Maybe. Is that too weird? I don't know if you guys can even see that. I'm trying to be helpful. I like I'm being helpful. Okay. I love y'all. Yeah, away. Oh, man. <laughs> so again, even though the ye, this is just a weird thing. So there was a decision made to write, and I think it's the right one. You write ye and ha separate from the verb. It's still the verb, but it becomes it's its own word. Because there are cases, like when you, you say, uh, where it, uh, we'll get into it later, it just makes sense to do it that way. But if it ends with a vowel, it's still going to follow that rule of three thing, where now we, it has to contract, and then the ch is, is the weakest thing, because you can have the ch, and we know it's me. We just, we know that that, you know, our brain just sort of figures that out. And so this is where we sort of reveal the clinket brain that exists within the language. Uh, so the yi is written separate, but then the ch is that will contract. And saying ichsechan and yichsechan is important. And I, I would tease people about this because they were learning clinket. And I like to tease people all the time because my grandpa used to tease people all the time. And I, I don't know. I try not to be mean, though. I really do. Uh, but someone was walking away from a group of us, and they turned around, and they said, Ichsechan. And I said, which one? Me? It better be me, right? And so, but Yichsechan is, is a little bit better. So this is how we sort of, we try not to play favorites. Okay. I love people. Is people the same as someone? People is going to be a Yeah, it's someone. Yeah, exactly. We write it as someone, but we often translate it as people. Also, like, I'm a lover. <laughs> okay, I gotta, I gotta keep sneaking the jokes in, because I know this part gets sneaky. I love something. And this is something, you probably wouldn't ever say this. So this is another thing to sort of preface is that this is an exercise. Uh, th and there's some things that I just left out. Because you could say, I love us. But that's a weird, it's just, the context is just weird. And it's getting into a cultural gray area where like you really probably shouldn't say that. And you also shouldn't say, I love myself. But you could it would be, but I don't include that in this example because to actually say that is, even though, you know, practice self-love, take care of yourself, maybe you want to talk about that. But from a clinky cultural perspective, that's not something you're supposed to say in public, just to put it out there. Because you're not supposed to, you're not supposed to be full of yourself. Um, but I love something. So the something is going to be, so we'll come back to this little thing here. The something will be at. at. 
Yeah, so if there's at, now there's no vowel, so it won't cause that contraction. At chasachan. At chasachan. At chasachan. Yik a, yik a, good sheesh. Okay, so now, if ch is me, so we can, uh, we can, now we can look at uh, these subjects. So is, if ch is me, what is we? If ch is me, what is we? Two. Two. Yep. Sheesh. Now we've been doing this for a while. I was getting. So now we have chasachan is I love him or her or it. So what about we love him or her or it? Tisachan. Sheesh. Lovers. Tisachan. Tisachan. Tusachan. Okay, so there's just the tu se chan. So even though we're seeing this, we're hearing this, we're saying this, we're gonna see those parts. Chan, chan, chan. That root is the same. Se, se, se. That classifier is the same. Tu. Now we have changed that. Ha, tu, ha, tu. So it's this combination of knowing what those other parts should be and then changing this one thing on the wheel. Sometimes we're changing two things on the wheel, right? But we're trying to move through this at a sort of a pace. And so what we'll do, we'll, we'll try this again on Tuesday. Uh, and we'll review. We'll start from the beginning. I'll put these slides up on our, uh, on our website. And then, uh, you know, this, this, is, this is the down and dirty work. How This is how we get dirty. Yeah, This is how people get dirty. Is you, you got to get in there, and so the 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 positive message in, in Hawaii. Uh, one of our teachers there, who's been doing this a long time, and he gets a little bit stern about things. Is people walk around with shirts that say Aloha Aina, love the land, and he'd say. Well, do you love the land? Is there, can I see the dirt under your fingernails? Are you out there working on the land? So this is, this is that down and dirty language work. This is the hard stuff where your, your brain is going to get tired because your brain is like, what, 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 what? Because this is, this is how, but this is how Clinkit works. This is the step of getting you into being able to manufacture language yourself. And then you take these, this type of information and you put yourself into some use areas. Um, and so the things we can start doing is when we move into these, we'll move back into these Immersion Thursdays. We kind of took a break. Uh, but when we move back into them, we'll, we'll start using this stuff. Craft a really short story. Do something, you know, now this is gonna open the doors to using all of these resources that when you look up a verb, you're able to start sort of using that in a really active way. So I really appreciate the, the effort, the, the, the energy, you know, to keep it going, to keep sort of trying and to keep sort of challenging yourself. Uh, but once, you know, they'll reach these light bulb moments where you're like, okay, and now I see the pattern. I see how the pattern works. And then you'll realize, you know, there's a whole bunch of verbs to learn after that, but at least you'll have these sort of pa basic patterns down. Any last thoughts or questions? Okay. Nus chis kating kia aku. Wushegah tu stin dehyegih ekeha. Nus chis huchaya. It is a chan, ye to sechan, right? We love y'all, right? And so it might be helpful to uh, uh, take one of those. Uh, we, we've had several of them, but I'll put another one up on our the, the today part of our website with just that cheat sheet that has those pronouns. And just to keep, you know, that's why 
But I gave you a couple of those pronoun cards so you could carry them around. For exercises like this, you could just look on that thing and it really helps to put it into your brain. That was really awkward video. <laughs>